Hello world, I got a microphone so you guys can hear me real good. My name's Elisa, if you've never met me, my name is Elisa and I am the writer of Sunday Morning Juice the blog. Usually this blog coincides with a video, it hasn't really been working out that way, well it did last week. This week not so much. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Today we are here to talk about me time and my Roman Empire. But, 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 if you're new, I always love to talk about what I'm drinking. So today I am drinking an ancient mushroom elixir. One thing about me, I love a mushroom psychedelic or not. This is a matcha vanilla with reishi, chaga, and turkey tail. If you saw my video from two weeks ago that you know I challenged myself to be bored every day for a minimum of 30 minutes and I'm here to tell you guys a little bit about how that went it went very well. I decided to do most of my 30 minutes of boredom on a nice leisurely walk. I'd go on a walk, no technology, just listening to the sound of the earth and the people around me. As you know from last week, that was not a boredom walk. That was me walking on a mission. But my boredom challenge has allowed me to not focus on music and podcasts and media so much. It lets me live in the moment. It lets me be aware during the moment. It lets me reflect on the day. It's been letting me set an intention for the day. My two weeks of boredom has ended. I've continued to not look to media for background noise or answers. I have decided to turn inward. You got, oh my God. So overall, my boredom challenge got me to thinking a lot. We have a lot of ground to cover today, guys. So let's get into it. I learned so freaking much about the stability that I need within myself. I actually started going to a yoga studio and I'm doing a 21 day challenge with them. Also, sitting alone with my thoughts has immensely contributed to the strategy that I've been putting behind my work in writing and not just writing for the blog. If you need a copywriter, my, my portfolio is gonna be linked below for you. Let's chat, serious inquiries only. But just a lot of serendipity has been happening and I, I can't say it's only because of the boredom, but I can say the boredom has led to a lot of insight for moi. Now, I'm gonna leave these sunglasses on the whole time. I... Another really important thing that I learned from my time of being bored is my recurring thoughts. Seven thoughts that just like on repeat every single day. I wrote a blog post last week called The Importance of Constructive Self-Talk. And in that blog post, I did my research as I do and I found out that the average person has 60,000 thoughts per day. And to be honest, it makes sense because I'm thinking about every single word that I'm about to say. Well, I'm not. I don't know, I don't even know how you measure that. I, I'm not even gonna pretend like I know. But what I do know is I had a lot of recurring thoughts. These recurring thoughts brought me to my Roman Empire. I'm just gonna quickly give you only three of them because you guys do not wanna be here all day. And I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing that I'm just basically dumping onto you. I hope you enjoy it because I do feel like it's very interesting. Like I'm not talking about nothing here, but at the same time, it could cause some emotion. My first Roman Empire, you guys, I'm gonna leave all of the links, all of the everything below because if you don't know about this, this very well might blow your mind is the underwater volcano that erupted near the Tonga. This is just gonna be my Spark Notes version. There was an underwater volcano that erupted near the Tonga Islands. This eruption shot water so high up into the sky that it shot enough water to fill almost 60,000 olympic sized pools into the stratosphere if you don't know what that means all of our weather happens in the troposphere the stratosphere enters into the ozone layer so when things get up there when things go up there that don't usually go up there they get stuck and they get trapped so nearly 60,000 olympic sized pools of water is stuck in our stratosphere which is contributing to climate change possibly for the next five years and heating the earth 
At quicker levels, when this eruption happened, it sent a sonic boom around the planet twice. And when the eruption happened, it caused the most intense lightning storm in the entire world ever, ever recorded in history. This eruption caused 2,600 lightning bolts per minute striking at the site of the eruption. This is only alleged because the lightning assessment instrument that records this blew up, blew up because there was so much energy and electricity that it couldn't record all of it. July was the hottest month ever recorded in Earth's planetary history because of this water that is stuck and trapped. Mm, this is, climate change is also to blame now. It's not just the eruption. These greenhouse gases that are trapped in the stratosphere, there's no way to extract it. Okay, so this next one here is a little more lighthearted, but then again, no. The orcas are, they taking over? I love water. I love being in water. I love feeling water. But it's just like, you will not catch me on a boat in this day and age because of the orcas are low key trying to take over. And I think it is a bit insulting to their intelligence for us to be like, oh my God, orcas are so smart. Oh my God, orcas really know how to communicate with other orcas around the world. As humans, we can't, we can't really continue to sit here and think that we are the smartest beings on the planet water is not our terrain that's their thing they know how to communicate they know a phone line down there that we don't know there there are things that they know that we don't know maybe they can't take over the land how we can but at the same time orcas they are running the planet but they're definitely acting out in a way that we all need to listen to exhibit a let's stop thinking the orcas are so smart let's get on their team Maybe they are trying to communicate to us about aliens in the outer world. We don't know. We know nothing. We don't even know 1% of things. Lastly, but this is not the leastly, I just always go back to thinking about this is where we are. Like I'm not even a decimal. At the end of the day, I let my brain run and it ran far. All right, you guys, that. Whew, that is all I have for you today. Um, and this just feels so personal. This just feels so intimate. The latest blog post, three drinks that double as a sleep aid came out yesterday. I was excited to write this one because you guys love the four teas, the double as a sleep aid. I'll link that below and I'll link the three drinks that double as a sleep aid, which is basically a part two. And I just want to throw out a quick apology if I have caused anybody to have an existential crisis from this video. Not my intention, but at the same time, I'm letting you into my mind and I have them weekly. But anyway, please like, share, comment, subscribe. I'm having so much fun editing and filming these videos and writing the content that you guys love and laugh at. You know what I mean? I like to entertain people and I love to tell a good story. So. Let me know in the comments below what you would like to hear about next. If you want my opinion on anything, um, my mocktail recipe ebook, Skip the Spirit, Save the Soul, is out as live. It's in my stand store. It's on Etsy. My last blog post. Go over there. Give it a look. Give it a follow. Maybe a like. Maybe leave a comment. Whatever you want to do. I just want you to know it is open for you to drop anything you want to drop to us. And I think that's all for me. And I think I'm going to see you back here on Monday. Bye.